When you have goals and dreams, you're going to have some hits. Things come out of nowhere. My favorite book says, Think it not strange that you face the fiery furnaces of this world. Forrest Gump was right. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> it's called life. How many have already had some hits? Raise your hands, please. So your mental resiliency, you're taking the time to work on you. Before we take off on a plane, they say fasten your seatbelt. Why? Because you're going to experience some turbulence before you reach a comfortable altitude. Same thing in pursuit of your goals and, and pursuit of your dream. When you're growing, things happen in your personal life, in your business life. You take a lot of hits and many people give up. They give up. They feel like, I can't make it. I, I can't overcome this. And we've all been there. So it's necessary that you take the time to work on yourself. I believe that mindset resiliency is major today. Here's the other thing. Write this down. Presentation power. How you present yourself. Mr. Washington taught me several things. He said, Mr. Brown? I said, yes, sir. He said, what do you want to do with your life, young man? I said, sir, I'd like to become a disc jockey. He says, good. He says, number one, work on your mind. That you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. And he gave me a series of audio programs. Lead the Field, The Strangest Secret in the World, The Greatest Secret in the World, Earl Nightingale and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. To listen to, to train my thinking. You've got to train your mind. Otherwise, your mind will be trained and programmed against you. And then he said something else. He said, Mr. Brown, develop your communication skills. Because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, he is very, very right. That, that I, I didn't do what I'm doing now because my mind. I, I just could not believe that because I never worked for a major corporation, I couldn't believe, I assume, because I don't have a PhD or an MBA, I assume because I had tremendous inferiority complex because of the fact that I, I didn't have a college education, so I felt I could not compete. I could not establish myself as a resource. I could not establish myself as an expert. So for 14 years, because I was focused on what I didn't have, I didn't do what I'm doing now. I was suffering from possibility blindness. Robert Root said in a book, said, that, that it's not what you don't have, it's what you think you need that keeps you from becoming successful. So I didn't do what I'm doing now. But I can say to you, continue to do what you're doing and working on yourself and working on your mindset and your presentation power. Because once you open your mouth, as he said, the world will now know who you are. Your ability, and write this down, to tell your story is key. It's major and how you present yourself 101. Why is that important, Mr. Brown? Because when you meet someone and you want to do business with them, people are asking three questions, one-on-one, -on -one, small groups or large groups. They're asking, who are you? What do you have? And why should I care? That's what they're asking. Because in the business where you are, trust is important, am I correct? Confidence is important, am I correct? There's a lot of skepticism around the industry because of things that have happened. A major investment that people have to make, am I correct? Yeah. So now they're looking at you, who are you? And so your ability to tell your story. Who are you? What do you have? Your ability to communicate that in a way that will connect with people, in a way that will expand their minds, in a way that will touch their heart, in a way that will cause them to say, this is the person that I want to put my trust in. This is a person that I believe in this major decision that our family is about to make now that we should go with. How many of you know that's real? Raise your hands, please. So the ability to tell your story. What is it that we're doing in the selling process? Write this down because I'm going to take you into the training room. What we're doing is something I'm doing now. Distract. Write that down. Distract, dispute, and inspire that how we live our lives is a result of the story we believe about ourselves. That's what psychologists call a self-explanatory style. When you start speaking, you distract people from the story, from the skepticism, from all the assumptions that they have about the industry. Distract. You distract them. You override that conversation. 
and through the delivery of your execution of your presentation, distract, dispute, and inspire. You inspire them to become, as Mother Teresa would say, to become a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives. Because how you present yourself and all the techniques and strategies that Brian has shared with you and all the systems that you've put together to impact and to position you as a resource and a caring individual, all of those things working together to create an experience. It must be strategic and experiential. Most people think just, you know, just the information is important. And Brian is right. See, if, if information could change people, everybody would be skinny, rich, and happy. <laughs> but you, when you write this down, you have an energy signature. Dr. Julie Van Putten, this is her, her emphasis. You have an energy signature. When you are communicating and talking with someone, one-on-one -on -one small groups or large group, you have an energy signature, and as a result of the experience that you create, Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. That's why Brian talked about the fact that, you know, people make decisions based upon emotion and they justify it with logic. And so being strategic and experiential with your story and using the techniques and strategies on how you present yourself and the things that you're doing to establish credibility and to be seen as a resource, to be seen as an expert. How many of you know that's important? Raise your hands, please. Very good. So it's important that you learn how to tell your story. It's important. And write this down. To get coaching in that area. Because you have too much writing on it. And you're being here. Investing your money and your time and your energy. You're being here. Being tra trained by the greatest coaching program on the planet. Give yourselves a round of applause for this major investment you've made in yourself. Come on. Bring your energy level up. Bring your energy level up. Now, as you look at yourself, what, what is it that separates people? When you leave here, what is it that, that when you look at people who, who come together and, and they go through a variety of things and they have a lot of experiences and they're exposed to a lot of information and coaching, what is it that, that allow people to change their lives? Let me, let me share this with you. When I look at my life, let's pull the slide up, please. And, and one of the things that I can tell you, let us say this together, it's not where you start. Together, please, it's not where you start. It's where you're going. I want you to think about where you're going. Do this, please. Get a three-by-five card. Do this. I, I'm telling you, it will make a difference. And write down the major goal that you are going to, listen to how I'm saying this, that you're going to achieve in 2015. Major goal that you're going to achieve. And then on the flip side, write Matthew 7, 7, Ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened. I can tell you unequivocally, if you discipline yourself to read that goal every day on a regular basis, I did that. And I'm going to show you the benefits of doing that. Now, why is it important? Because what you want to do is begin to program your thinking. Our thoughts have magnetic power. I was going to call a friend the other day, and all of a sudden he was calling me. How many of you have ever had that experience? Raise your hands, please. So what you're doing now is harnessing your thoughts. You're focusing your mind. You're stimulating what is called your reticular activating system. It's an awareness, a group-like of cells at the base of your brain that piques your level of awareness of those things that you value, those things that's important to you. Same as listening to audio programs, going through this coaching and training yourself to do certain things on a regular basis, carving out this time to focus on your mind. So here's what happens when I look at it, and as you go to, back to the slide, please. And so as you look at yourself, that this is the background in which I, I came out of, and I, that's, that's my twin brother and I, all right? We're eating sugar cane. Anybody here ever eat sugar cane? Raise your hand, all right? Very good. Now, Donald Trump's father gave him 200 million dollars to pursue his dream. How many of you know if someone gives you 200 million dollars to pursue your dream, you got a good shot. Raise your hands, all right? <laughs> My mama gave us two pieces of sugar cane. <laughs> Now, now, it took me three years to earn my first million. Now, if you wanted to learn how to earn a million dollars, how many of you are ready for your first million? Raise your hands, please. Good. 
who would you want to teach you, me or Donald Trump? Absolutely. So go out and get some sugar cane. I'm going to show you how to do that, all right? <laughs> but look here.